Our Heavenly Father, oh, I'm so happy today to be here at Cleveland, this great city, one of the major cities of our beloved nation, and to be here to give a testimony of the Son Jesus, who has led redeem the slot races of people throughout all the world. And now, as you've gathered us here together this afternoon, to pour out of your Spirit upon us, I believe, <clears throat> every man, woman, boy or girl, from every church, every creed, denomination, race, color, forget about all about the past now. Let's look to the future. Let's look to that continuing city that is here to come. Cleveland is home to many thousands, yes, millions, over a million people here. God, we pray that men and women will be never be satisfied until they have met peace with you so that we can go to that continuing city. Looking upon the giant skyscraper in the city, looking upon the fine buildings and structures, but there will be a time when there won't be one stone left upon another. We believe that these cities in this major great major conflict that's coming will be rocked with atomic powers and millions will die in hours blow to bits even the earth shook from its orbits going into the sun and great heat shall scorch men as scripture says in the book of revelation now help us god to get our mind on you settle down to go into this body bloody trail i review it lord the best of my knowledge you help me as i start back from the beginning when you put your hand on your poor humble servant and may all my mistakes today may others and young boys and girls who's coming on may they be stepping stones to bring them to thee may they profit from my errors of suffering and that they might know you in the power of the resurrection for we ask it in the name of the beloved child jesus amen now those outside can you hear all right out there outside well i'm sorry you have sat there in that sun it's so bad but we just haven't looked like the room right here now every one of us are minded at this time when anyone goes to talking about a home it reminds us of some similar experience that we are all how many strangers here that's away from home that's your hand my there's many of you all right frankly all of us are pilgrims and strangers of this earth we are seeking a city to come whose builder and maker is god abraham left the land of chaldi and the city of ur going out sojourning professing to be a pilgrim and a stranger for he was seeking a city whose builder and maker was god inspiration something telling him that there was a city somewhere and abraham went to find it and john on the isle of patmos saw our future home coming down from god out of heaven where we're going someday the great inspiration of god tells us that the home is just beyond the gloom where we all go let's take a little trip will you i just want to talk to you just from the bottom of my heart let's take just a little trip i'm just going to let myself get about even being a minister just talk to you let's go down home just for a little while everybody likes to do that wouldn't you like to go back to the old trail again or stand here rather and kind of begin to think about it i can just see every little path where i was a little boy when you remember those experiences little girls think of them most of those little girls that old mother used to hold her apron strings done gone to be with jesus them little girls that she played with and borrowed the pencils and school from each other many of them then crossed the border the old dad and mother and so forth that used to get you ready to go to school gone here we have no continuing city but we're seeking one to come when i was born i weighed five pounds a little bit boy and i haven't grown very much since but then my mother she carried me around on a pillow i was born in a little log cabin way in the mountains of kentucky cumberland county near a little creek called renox there's only one way you get through there that's you go through the creek that's the only way to go is by the creek it's a little isolated place way down near the tennessee line on the cumberland river my father was a logger my mother her father was a school teacher and the principal of the rural schools didn't get to go to school very much in kentucky you know the creeks could get up and you couldn't go in the summertime they had to take a gooseneck hoe and chop out the corn tobacco and stuff that they raise in the hills and make a living I was down, standing by the little log old cabin not long ago, and took a picture of it. I think it appeared in my book, a little old two-room cabin. The porch, the end of the kitchen, has fallen down. I looked at it. I could imagine seeing my mother there. My dad was just a young man. Mother, only 15 years old when I was born. A little mountain. Children. And my dad worked hard all of his life. He died young, 52. I'm thankful that there's... 
mothers still living today is can be here with me all my life i guess i was a misunderstood person no one understood me when as a little boy i can just as i can barely remember my mother knows behind that how the angel of the lord came to the room and i do not know i know this i mean it was not goodness of my father and mother they were both sinners and it was no merits of my own it was the merits of jesus christ our family later on we poor oh my i'm just almost ashamed to tell you that how poor that we had to live upsetting has misunderstood so much till when I'd be taken on the street to someone and somebody else would come up, well, they'd walk away and let me stand. And I loved people, but no one had nothing to do with me. I was what they called the black sheep. I'd go downtown, whereas as a little boy, school, they had nothing to do with me. I wouldn't smoke and things worse of them, so they had nothing to do with me. And then as I become aged to go out with girls, 16, 17, 18 years old, why? Because I didn't go to dances and parties and things like that. I was a wallflower, so they had nothing to do with me. When I became a minister in the Missionary Baptist Church, I was a fanatic. So God finally got me to the place where he was bringing me to, you see, to the people of his call. I was uh, sitting not long ago on the porch. I had just come in from a meeting. I was so tired, I couldn't have to go. My, I was so tired. I just got most of the crowd away from the house. And I sat down on the porch, and my poor old wife, she was just 30 years old, but turning gray. I put my arm around her and sat from the porch, and we was rocking a little bit. She said, are you tired, honey? And I said, so tired, I can hardly stand up. Just then, a car drove up. It was my piano player from over the tabernacle. She seen me sitting there, and she got... She ran up to the porch and just started crying, laid something on my lap and ran away. She said, I won't take your time. You rest while you got this minute. I won't. And she ran away and I picked it up. I looked at it. There's a little picture on there. I looked up. I seen some big old sand cranes. We have them in Indiana. I don't know whether you have them here or not. They had been out in the ponds all day feeding. The sun was going down in the west. I looked over here and had that poem. Sunset and evening star and one clear call for me. May there be no morning at the bar when I put out to sea. We have heard it. It had a picture of a ship coming in a window open. The water, the sun going down, the star coming out. Now I looked there and I said, honey, think of it. A few years ago, I'd go down on the street, be talking to somebody, why? Somebody else would come up and talk to them, why? They'd go away. And I said, now, I have to almost hide out somewhere to the woods to get out. I can stop an airplane somewhere and they know you're coming through. They'll have all the sick people laying right on the ramps to be prayed for. I said, think of it now. I said, oh. What did it? My education? I have none. My personality? I have none. What did it? The blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God who redeemed me. He was the one who gave me friends. I looked, I seen those little sand cranes going down squawking. And I looked at two or three of them flying. I said, look, darling, they have been, God has provided for them all day long. They've eaten crawfish and minnows and so forth out in the ponds. And it's coming night now. They're gathering down on the higher falls there where all the cranes come and gather at night. And they sat there and chatter together like they were on a picnic, just having a, a good and sleep together through the night. God provides for them. Just then, two of my favorite birds, you might know them, what they were. Robins, oh, how I love a robin. Ever since I heard that story, little fiction story, when Jesus was dying at the cross. Listen, little boys and girls, don't never shoot my little robin. Leave him alone. He's a fine little bird. And I think the little fiction story and the song, you know, of how that when Jesus was dying, no one would come to him. And a little brown bird flew into the cross to try to save him, to pull the nails from his hands. He got his little breast all red with blood and he flew away and from then he had a red breast i think of it and i think god let me shield my breast with your blood too there when i come before you and that's just a little thing i th that i like robins and um, and two of them flew up in the tree and went over to the nest the little ones chur i said Look, God has fed them all day long. They are tired and weary now. They have come into the nest to their little ones to gather in for the night. Now, oh God, someday, when life is all over and I've done the best that I could do, 
Won't you let me gather in with the people I preach to? As sure as God has a place for the bus to gather, he has a place for us to gather. Someday we'll gather together at the setting of the sun we're going to gather. Well, I remember the days when a little boy about, there was about four of us in a family. I am my mother, the mother of ten children, nine boys and a girl. I was the oldest of the family. Then they come about a year and something different all the way down to a little girl. And now she's married, has a child. But I can remember when he was just three or four in a group. And we used to live in a little old place. And they left another luxurious place. I'm speaking of a little two-room cabin. Slats of old clapboard shingles, you know. Little old side down like that. And when we all had gathered down around there. And the little old before the door, I can just remember it. All the grass was wallowed down, where all these bunch of little brahams wallowed out. They're like a bunch of little opossums around the den, little old boys. And we had a table, and I didn't have very much furniture in the house. I can remember two old beds, the old, great, big high post beds, and old walnut i believe they were where the straw mattresses did you ever sleep on a straw tick yes you know what i'm oh i'm not the only country boy am i so an old straw tick and they had an old washstand mother had right between them and it had a marble in the middle here and the two little things on the side the little drawers you pull out i remember that and over to the one side we had a an old trunk that had those little holes bit in it you know it was them little tic tac whatever you want to call it on the metal and mama safe out in the kitchen had a little same kind of a stuff on and papa gave us a bench that we'd set behind the table to eat and look <clears throat> i never will forget did you ever set ever eat on a old wooden bench in the kitchen oh my my and i remember mother used to holler dinner time and all the little branhams would wash her face and under the table you know and up on the bench on the other side and we'd have a great big pot dinner mulligan stew mainly and each one would get him a, a plateful and we baked her bread mama baked it in a pan cornbread and she'd cut it in the middle and put it on the side on the table and you know jesus broke bread and blessed it he never cut it so each person broke his own piece of bread. That's Kentucky, brother, away down there. So she'd get this unbolted meal and make the flour. And I used to sit right next to dad where the bread did. And I'd always managed to get a corner of the bread. I was brown. It was brown in castor, you know. And uh, I'd get that part there. And uh, then we'd have been uh, bean soup. And I'd, you'd crumble the cornbread. And you know, that wouldn't go bad right now. That's right. Just to think of it, it'll be fine. And I remember we'd sit there and eat. I've eaten many places since then. But, oh, brother and sister, if I could only go back to that one more time. That's right. To those old times back there. And all the loved ones, how we'd gather around there. And I remember when they moved from there to another place. And how dad used to take us down to town on Saturday night. That was a big night. They had a little old jersey wagon, drove a little mule, I remember his name, Kutsi, they called him, and an old little mule, and Dan would go get it, and I'd see him come in when he, my dad was a small man, was about my size, and I used to see him when he would roll up his sleeves, we had a glass tucked on a tree on the outside on a wash bench, you remember when you used to have that, and the mom would take, uh, make the hand towels out of the old mill sack, pull the hems of the strings out, you know, make a little fringe on them, they was rough. When she'd get my ears, I thought they were all rough. And she would stand me up and would make me wash myself and she'd use it rough. And uh, I remember seeing when dad, when he'd roll his sleeves up and wash, and I thought, oh my, my, daddy, he'll never die. Look at those big muscles. He was a logger and a great big strong arms. I thought, oh my, look at him, he'll never die. But here we have no continuing city. He left a young man, a lot younger man when he died than I am now. And then when, a little later on along, I remember then, the old house where it stood. I like, I look at that old house and I thought, oh my, is that strong? How wonderful what the structure of it is. I said, that house will be there for many generations. 
I was passing by, but just before I come down here, and they had a housing project built there now, nothing to represent. I remember the old field out there, through there where we, brother and I used to take the old, cut the old middle works, go out and try to make them out in the field, run down through there, and my, my, you don't know what I'd give to get run down that path again barefoot, too much dad when you come across a field, pick one up in one arm, one on the other, walk with us to the house, oh my, those golden days. I remember when dad standing out there and I thought, oh, how great, how this all is, many of you have similar experiences, but them sisters is passing away, those houses are gone. Here, where the old spring, where I used to lay down and drink cold water, it isn't even there no more. We have nothing earthly here that lasts very long. Notice, down there, to all the school, oh, how I remember going to school. Those great days, I remember dad and the mother used to go to the town on Saturday night. As kids would want to go with them, and they'd pay the grocery bill, pop made a whole 75 cents a day. Great money then, but he had to feed five children. And, and look, all of you know from my testimony, when I'm telling things, whether it's good or bad, I've got to be truthful and honest. You know, it had the judgment, so why not know it here? My father drank very, very heavy Irish, and he just, uh, fact is, was killed him. Notice, and I remember when he would come in and we'd go to town on Saturday night, We'd all get a little old jersey wagon, go to town, pay the grocery bill. We'd wrap up in the blankets if it was winter time. In the summertime, we'd set on some straw. We'd stop down at the corner, the old splits grocery, and remember when they'd pay the grocery bill, Pop would get a sack full of candy for a treat, and he'd bring it out. That was for us boys. Boy, there'd be five little pair of blue eyes.